Welcome to Value Research Helpline. I'm here to answer your questions and let me get started. Ajay Gupta is asking that I have a goal of having uh, a time target of three years. Uh, then in these volatile times in equity market, where should I invest? In a good corporate bond fund or an equity fund or an equity saving fund or an arbitrage fund? Arbitrage fund is ruled out because, you know, consider arbitrage fund as uh, almost like, an e or a, like a liquid fund with a different tax treatment. So your options are these two. Which of these two options depend on the negotiability of your uh, uh, goal? If you definitely need the X amount of money, which is your contribution or your savings and investment, and uh, little more than that, then consider corporate bond fund, a high quality corporate bond fund. You have to, be, uh, you have to choose it carefully and be at it. Uh, if it is little negotiable, if you need the money in a range of three to four years, not definitely after end of three years, then you can consider equity saving fund because there could, you know, 30, uh, a third of the money typically in, in, the, in equity can give you an upside and there could be a corresponding downside as well. Uh, and for three years time frame, never consider equity. Bhanumati Suresh is asking that I thought segregated portfolio is applicable only in case of debt or hybrid funds where AMC perceives default in companies, bonds, or non-convertible debentures held by them. I got letter from AMC where I'm holding only equity fund to opt for redemption in case I don't agree to its segregation. Is this applicable to me since I have only equity fund? Uh, equity funds typically have very small allocation to fixed income instruments, and it can well be applicable there because if the fixed income, if the equity fixed income component or the bond com bond investments in an equity fund is facing such a trouble or facing such a crisis then there could be need of a segregation segregation is a very useful thing you know if you look at it uh, if if a bond gets into a, you know if a uh, repayment of a principal or interest from a bond is is difficult then at least your interest is guarded that whenever the issue gets resolved you will be entitled to that benefit so in that sense, in equity fund, typically it should not be there. Generally, it won't be the situation, but it can happen. Uh, many hybrid funds have significant bond allocation. Many equity funds have 5 to 10% into, into fixed income as well. Uh, so, and this particular notice that you have got, it is primarily a situation that uh, the fund had a prospectus, but it was not enabled. It is enabling them to actually position for such a situation in future. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the segregation is going to happen. In case of equity fund, I really don't visualize that a, a fund is going to face a situation with a fixed income investment that will translate into you know, a segregation of a portfolio or what is popularly called as side pocketing. Uh, Amol Kulkarni is asking that uh, there is news regarding people moving out of mutual fund. and uh, they are moving to invest in stocks directly. Will this impact mutual fund? Uh, no, it will not impact mutual fund. In fact, there, are, there, there has always been people uh, who invest in stocks and they also invest in mutual fund. Now, many people are beginning to invest in stocks directly. I think um, if they are doing it thoughtfully, if they are doing it carefully, and uh, if they have the time inclination, uh, then understand, then it's fine. Uh, even if they are doing with some discipline in terms of what kind of money they are investing, what will be the downside. But if they, there are a lot of investors who are investing just because there is a momentum, the market is, has gone up, and they think that the market will keep going up. Uh, if that is the basis, then it's a very dangerous thing to do because markets turn around when you least expect it. And they normally turn around when you are reasonably confident that it can't go down anymore. It can't go down further or it won't go down. Uh, so from that standpoint, I would say that it is generally risky for investors. And I think, you know, mutual fund present a very different case. Uh, for many investors, you know, the real problem is not that can they choose a good company. Uh, that is, of course, one of the challenge. But uh, can they diversify? Do they have the temperament? Can you be disciplined? And what mutual fund does is, you know, you, it provides you a quick portfolio, a diversified portfolio. 
it enforces a discipline because you are doing your SIP. Some, because when you invest in stock, you have to take all the decision yourself, which company to invest, when to invest, when not to invest, when to sell, uh, when, to, when to hold, have the patience. Uh, the design of mutual fund is basically, it helps you does, it, do your SIP. Uh, so the courage bit is gone. You, you are onto a methodical plan. Uh, it, it inculcates patience because if you are planning to do your SIP for three years, four years, which means you'll keep accumulating and will not pull out money. Uh, you will be driven by your goals if you are saving for a goal. So that also brings in the element of, you know, some kind of method or discipline in terms of investing for a goal, uh, which mutual fund facilitates. In case of stock, in, in investing in stocks directly, I think all these decisions are yours. So, so and of course, mutual funds come with a cost and uh, investing in di stocks directly won't cost you the management fee. Uh, but the, I think the benefits for any naive investor, any person who is uh, investing in the markets, uh, the benefit of mutual fund because of this, the discipline, the, the simplicity, the convenience uh, makes it well worth it. So I don't think so. There will be investors who will keep, you know, and it always happens whenever the market goes up in a brief period of time in a hurry. Uh, a lot of investors get excited about uh, uh, stock, investing in stocks directly. Uh, but uh, the positioning or the perception or the treatment of mutual fund as a savings vehicle uh, uh, is different. Investing in stock is hard if you combine the, the skill needed, the information needed, needed the, the knowledge needed, but above all, you know, all the, uh, the patience required, the courage required, and, uh, uh, and you have to be on top of things, uh, the uh, temperament. So I think, you know, this is, this is a phase which comes every few years. And uh, I don't think it is going to be a very sustained or sustainable trend, uh, for, uh, in my opinion. Hemant Verma is asking, uh, that I'm retiring in 2022, expecting a corpus of one crore, will have rental income of about 25,000, and expected in expenditure monthly of 50,000 rupees. Can you please advise investment strategy to follow? Uh, this is, you are on a good wicket. Uh, your annual re uh, requirement of three lakh rupees to begin with it will be just 3% of your uh, corpus. So, uh, you are reasonably well covered. The way to do it is, you know, uh, of course, uh, when we launch our premium service, uh, you will be able to get a custom portfolio for your requirement. But I'll give you the principles now anyway, that when you get this one crore rupee, build your portfolio of, you know, first the guaranteed ones, uh, 15 lakh rupee in senior citizen saving scheme, which will yield you 7%. I would say that you know somebody like you should have a two-third uh, or maybe 50% into equity and 50% into debt. That will also take care of your three lakh rupees withdrawal requirement. Uh, but and of your fixed income allocation, think of 25 lakh rupees being allocated to guaranteed saving schemes. You know the senior citizen saving scheme and post office MIP. Uh, that return itself will be close to you know fulfilling your need. Uh, and remaining money, the appreciation of rest of the money uh, in a manner that, uh, that will take care of your need for increasing capital. Because today, you, you know, two years from now, you will require 25,000 rupees of income from your investment. Uh, but uh, five years from now, you will require 35,000 rupees because of rising inflation or your change requirement. So in that situation, it is important for your capital to go up in value. And I think you have enough margin uh, enough capital to provide for that. In fact, you can have even more even to begin with. Uh, but uh, you will have, an, it is always good to have, you know, this margin of safety or, you know, margin, the, the, the buffer. And uh, uh, you can well do with, you know, even a conservative allocation, but I would suggest that given the safety, given, given the buffer you have, you can way, well go up with a 50% allocation and fixed income allocation, half of it filled with guaranteed saving schemes. Anurag Patel is asking that I'm a 26, 26 year old investor. As the markets are currently irrational, uh, we are expecting a crash in next 
uh, 6 to 12 months. I have gold and negative beta debt fund in my portfolio to hedge the same. But looking at the current market situation, I am unsure about the proportion of gold and negative beta bond in my portfolio. Uh, you are 26 year old and you have a great uh, hypothesis. And uh, I don't understand all this. What I understand is, you know, uh, it's very difficult to predict what is going on. And it is very difficult to predict the short term direction of the market. I will still go with, you know, an asset allocation. I, I would like to be guided by asset allocation. Fortunately for you, Anurag, you know, you are 26 year old. And you, I hope that you know you have meaningful accumulation. But uh, I also think that you know if you are earning and saving an investment, you don't have sizable allo You may not have sizable allocation if you have been investing for last two three years. It is important to maximize your return when you have nothing. Uh, so have an allocation which is suited to that, and uh, the market will turn around. Whether it takes one and a half year, one whether it takes three years. It will justify and it will roar and, you know, different kind of companies will make a big comeback. Uh, we will be on a growth path. And, you know, it's uh, investing in equity. We should not forget that it is a general bet on our economy. Will we be better off from here on? You know, not, notwithstanding this crisis, which is holding us back. And it is actually destroyed our premise to plan or expectation or the hope that uh, when we will get past this. But beyond this, but we should at some point and after that you know we will whenever we get we get back on track companies will prosper and you know companies will start making more money and grow grow and you know a lot of uh, fluff will be out of the market a lot of companies will you know mortality of companies will also be a good news in a sense that uh, the efficient the better ones uh, they will thrive and uh, that is capitalism that is that is something which will happen and i think you know we have uh, based on you know basis of what the recent regulatory changes many changes that we have seen in the last four or five years i think you know uh, we, are, we are a better configured capitalist society or, or for the businesses from a business point of view uh, so i would say that uh, work on an asset allocation maybe if you want to be an active investor go with the asset allocation and uh, rebalance it more often. Have some allocation to gold and think of gold as an insurance with your premise. But don't do over engineering with this portfolio because uh, it is important. I know very simple principles that uh, simple principle that you know you have to remain invested in the market uh, for the big jump which comes with a surprise. And uh, there is absolutely no way around it. If you are looking at market on a day to day basis, uh, you were saying that the market is irrational. Markets are always irrational. Uh, when markets actually tank and go down in the dumps and, you know, it looks like uh, when the dividend yields are zooming and, you know, you just don't... The, and it looks like the world is coming to an end and all businesses will die. That is also irrationality. Uh, so I would say that markets will remain irrational you have to define a rational way of uh, navigating this market and uh, you have to base it on things that you can control not things which you see because we, there could be absolutely no correlation and i would say that uh, read my next column on value research online where i have you know i have recently read that book and discovered that uh, we try to base on these, uh, you know, we try to make our assumptions about correlation between what we think and how we behave and the result of that. And it could be completely unconnected. So read it. I think it will be an interesting reading. Chaitu is asking that why does SEBI's recent tweak in side pocketing norms due to COVID situation mean to retail investors? Does investing in debt funds still make sense for retail investors when even a high quality paper can be side pocketed without any actual downgrade or a credit event? Uh, no, this, this tweaking is very useful because if you remember one of the most uh, significant uh, side pocketing or segregation of portfolio that we saw in January uh, by Franklin Templeton, a sizable part of, you know, nearly 7% of the fund was segregated. But as the rules state today, 
uh, used to state that till there is a rate, you know, there is a credit action, the fund manager cannot segregate that portfolio. And that time gap was about six to seven days. It took six, seven days for the fund to acknowledge that, to follow the rule and do that segregation. During that seven days, all the investors who took their money out because the money went down in value by 7% that very day itself but because of the valuation. And after seven days, the portfolio was segregated. All the people who got out of the fund within those next seven days, uh, they lost the money. They, did not, they were not part of the segregated portfolio. So segregation of portfolio and segregation of the portfolio in a timely fashion is important. And uh, the fund manager knows it will happen, but it is not. It, it will take four or five days. So I think you know it is. It is a very useful tweak that has been done. It has been done with the practicality in mind that you know this is actually the situation we are facing. It is learning from their own experiences. So that is one. This is a useful tweak that has been done more so with the expectation that the week we will be faced with such, such you know. Uh, such credit issues more often now uh, as and when the you know companies get out of the moratorium uh, because this, now this has been extended till uh, it was extended till August now September and now this special thing that has been provided to the banks uh, by Kamath committee uh, so you know there will be, there will be things there will be credit issues that will crop up I would say that uh, are on the side of caution. If it's a very important money, you don't have to take this risk. You have to really evaluate for yourself, is it worth it? Um, should you be taking that risk? And uh, otherwise, I think, you know, uh, but the, uh, the other side of the problem is that the yields have come down or the returns or the interest rates have come down so low that uh, if you are essentially depending on interest, you have to take some risk. Now you have to figure out a way of how to take that risk in a measured way. How to take that risk so that you are not hurt badly. How do you do that? Uh, focus on quality. Don't get distracted. And uh, don't get distracted by noise. And uh, look at the credit rating, exercise your diligence, be very selective, and don't get carried by the highest returning uh, debt fund. That is, that, that is the first red flag that comes to my mind. Ashok Srivastava is asking that financial advisors say that you should review mutual fund performance regularly. How frequently should that review be carried out? At six or 12 month interval or later, what parameters should be reviewed to evaluate fund performance? Is fact sheet sufficient or monthly performance which statutory disclosure? I would say that you, know, you should do the review annually. Uh, uh, intense review of your investments every year. At the same time, you should come and check your portfolios, you know, upload your portfolio at Value Research Online. Come and look at the asset allocation because I think that is a very significant thing. Doing a review, the first step is to look at asset allocation and have a preset allocation in mind that you are, you are going to be 50% equity, 50% debt, 75% equity, 25% debt. How do you check it? Set up your portfolio at Value Research Online. Look at it every month. If that portfolio allocation has changed dramatically, you will have to take some action or not. Uh, sometimes you can do without taking an action because you know if you are doing your SIP, by just moving your SIP in the other direction, if your, if your equity has become 78%, maybe put your money, incremental money in fixed income. If your fixed income has gone down and, or, or gone up, then move your money from equity or stop putting your money in equity. So you can change accordingly. You can either redeem and reset your, you know, reset your allocation or do it with the incremental money. Don't be hyperactive about it. Generally do it every year because it is also very tax efficient it, and it also aligns with the, you will be saved of all the exit load and other things which will be applicable on equity fund investment. Uh, keep an eye on once in a while, take a look at the value research rating. That should be your first, you know, first prompt to look at things. And maybe once we have our premium service live, you will be look at each. You will be able to look at the quality. You know, our buy, sell, hold, or no opinion on each and every fund uh, that is worth investing. And uh, so you will get a clear signal in terms of if you have to sell, which ones to sell. If you have to carry on or buy more, which ones to do. And uh, 
So that will be another useful tool for you. And we will be covering the whole universe of investable funds. So, uh, so that's it. Um, so value research and fact sheet combined together will be able to fulfill all your requirement. Fact sheet is very fund specific. Uh, but value research portfolio will be able to give a unified view of all your investments at one place. It will give you your asset allocation and premium service uh, will be able to provide you all the kind of uh, uh, inputs uh, to take action. Harish Naidu is asking that how much of direct equity should I invest compared to mutual fund? I don't have an answer for this Harish. There are m multiple possibility. If you are going to invest in equity for the first time, try it with 10% of your money. And that 10% should be worthwhile money. Maybe that 10% of that of your money should be something like, you know, a few lakh rupees. So that it's interesting enough, you know, you should be, it should hold your interest. Uh, and then implement, do, you know, do your pilot. It's almost like trying out everything because uh, talking about investing in equity is easy. You can get your recommendation from Value Research Stock Advisor. You can go to any of these investing platform and they provide you a zero brokerage account completely online. They provide an app which works very smoothly and, you know, zero da grow and, you know, whatnot. So uh, it looks too unreal, you know. The moment you have, and, you know, if you have an online bank account, move your money from there to the, to the broker's account and you are good to go. A uh, few, three clicks and your transaction is done. Uh, so, ability to invest is definitely, you know, uh, uh, your, uh, the logistics, the mechanism of investing in equity or shares is very easy. Uh, the hard part is that, uh, do you have the temperament? Do you have the courage to invest and choose which one to invest? Assuming that you have decided that you will invest in 20 stocks, which one will you invest tomorrow? What percentage of your money will be that? Will you have the patience? And uh, will you have the intelligence when to sell? And uh, you can have, you know, combination of services, which will service, which, you know, advisory service, which will provide you this. But it will still require you to act. It will still require. So I would say that do gradually. Start your experimentation with 10%. Then in a year's time, if you are happy with what you are doing, if you think, and I also feel that you should do it because the whole exercise is also very enriching. You get to learn about new companies. You got, get to learn about the business models being followed. You get to learn about what is cheap right now. Even if you want to invest in 10 companies, three companies are relatively cheaper. Seven companies are not worth investing today at the current prices. There could be great companies available at fancy price where there could be a recipe of disaster. There could be a great companies, uh, you know, which is available cheap, but investing in those cheap companies when they are falling is, a, is an act of courage. So it is, it is, it is not a, as easy as it looks like. It's a thoughtful exercise. And uh, so start with 10%. In a year's time, take it up to 25%. Method, methodically in two years' time, take it up to 50%. So, you know, be gradual about it. Uh, mutual fund actually helps you substantially on that front. Once you start to, you know, doing your 50,000 rupee SIP, uh, then, you know, you don't have to worry about all this. You get diversification, you get some professional management, you may like it or not, but, you know, you are, somebody is taking care of things. And, uh, you know, uh, transparency at a very insignificant cost, or as, at a modest cost, I would not say insignificant, because the long-term cost of that, you know, compounded cost of uh, management fees could be meaningful. Still, uh, for the service that you get, you know, that uh, you, the, the kind of convenience and the kind of discipline it reinforces uh, is, uh, is wonderful. So do it gradually. And if, you, if with your 10%, you figure out that you are not cut out for this, it is too much of hard work and you are going wrong, you are not configured uh, to act uh, or you act in a haste and you end up being a speculator though you, were, you, you, you set out to become an investor, then close it, take your money out, that 10%, whatever money is left, put it back in a fund, not to look back again. So be open about this, try it out. Uh, can you explain the, okay, Arun, Arun Sardesh Pandey is asking that, can you explain the significance of different colors used in the table of fund category returns 
Oh, Arun, I thought that we have done it very intuitively. Dark green means very high return in during that period. A uh, little less uh, darker green is modest return, modest positive return. That, that uh, yellow kind of thing that you see is, uh, uh, is average, you know, is, is the middle of the, uh, of the ground. And that is why you see a significant part which is, which is yellow kind of thing. And uh, light uh, orange, you know, which is not dark red, uh, is poor return. Uh, relative to its past or in, during that period, and dark red is quite obvious, uh, strong negative return. So I thought that you know this color coding was quite intuitive, uh, but uh, maybe you know, uh, and it's an indicative thing. You can look at those numbers itself. When you see plus fifty percent and you see dark green, it's quite obvious. You can click on that time period and things get sorted. It gets sorted and then it becomes a gradient of colors dark green light green yellow orange red so uh, maybe you know you can figure it out yourself and those numbers also speak very precisely plus 50 and minus 10 minus 10 might be you know that dark red at the bottom uh, kedar joshi is asking that is it a good strategy to book some profit from sbi blue chip five year sip what is the general strategy to book profit or exit from old and not best performing fund uh, kedar the best strategy to, uh, you know, you should book profit uh, for two reasons. One is if you have set out on an asset allocation and that allocation has changed dramatically, take some part of the money. And uh, most importantly, you know, I think that should be the first first uh, check, checkpoint. If you need the money, if you were investing with a particular goal and this investment has translated into an accumulation where you can actually go ahead and buy your car, you can go ahead and buy your, put the down payment for the house which you were saving for, take that money out. If you thought that it will happen in five years time frame and it has happened in three and a half years, take that money out. You have succeeded. You have won the match. You have, the game is over. If you, are, if you set out on a goal and if that has been achieved, take the money out. Sometimes it takes longer, sometimes it, take, it can happen early. Uh, that should be the first rule. Second one, as I was saying, that your allocation has changed dramatically. And the third thing, you know, which sometimes you, should, you have to act, that you invested in a fund because you liked it. You liked the fund because it was doing well. You liked the fund because it was behaving in a certain manner. And ever since you bought or in, in recent past or in re, of, of late, uh, relative to others, it, it is not doing as well. It is misbehaving. It is not doing the, what you and it is no longer the fund. If you have to really choose a fund to invest, this will not be the fund. If this will not be the fund, then it should not. You should not hold it even. So that is the third reason when you should sell. Otherwise, I don't think you should simply sell because of something is happening to market. You are apprehensive about the market. Asset allocation to a great extent or to a reasonable extent is to going to do that job. Gaurav Khanna is asking that, can you please suggest me a good equity fund to diversify into international equity and a good mid-cap fund? I have a horizon of 10 years. Oh, you have plenty of, you know, choose from our universe of uh, top-rated mid-cap funds. And about the international fund, we li I like quite a few of them. And quite a number of them are also relatively new coming, but they all those funds, the underlying funds have an history. The ones which I like is, you know, uh, I like uh, NASDAQ 100 and with a long term view, notwithstanding that, you know, in few weeks time or last week it went down, next month it will go up or whatever. Uh, I simply like it for its, uh, you know, quality of portfolio, the underlying businesses, popular, large, sizable business, which still has a lot of room to grow. So those are the international funds I like. And uh, next month, uh, uh, maybe a few weeks from now, you will, you will have our recommendations in the premium service, which will be continually updated and reviewed by our analyst on an ongoing basis. And uh, we will be at it. Whenever there will be a need to make a change in our view, we will be, uh, we will be upfront. You know, we will be immediately getting back to you. So you will almost have a value research fund, fund analyst working as your advisor through this premium service. We will give you a long list of good funds. And uh, you can choose your funds. 
and we will be keeping an eye. So when there is, whenever there is a need to change, whenever those funds are no longer good as uh, we thought them to be, or uh, there is a significant change which makes us think, change our mind, or change our view on them, uh, we will let you know. Gaurav Pandey is asking that uh, there is a rise in international mutual fund schemes in market and few online brokers such as ICFA Securities have started offering services to invest directly in US stocks. How would investors invest uh, split money between domestic and international uh, investments? Uh, there isn't a thumb rule and I don't think uh, we, I can devise a thumb rule. Uh, we have historically invested all our money in Indian, Indian shares or Indian mutual fund simply because that was the option. Last couple of years, last maybe for a long time now, it has been quite a while that you know it is possible for Indians to invest in international funds. But investors haven't really taken fancy to this because uh, our market, you know, the growth of our market or the expectation of growth in our market was expected to be much better or my, m much higher than uh, what has been going on. So, uh, uh, but I think, you know, it's a very useful diversification. Uh, the kind of exposure or the, the way you are able to diversify your investment is very critical. I would say that uh, there isn't a thumb rule. It can well be 100%. It can well be 50%. Uh, but, uh, uh, and it could be, you know, try it out with your 20% allocation. And there are different ways to achieve this. If you want to have it in a neat package, uh, if you are doing your SIP in one fund or two fund, there are options. You know, you have this Franklin Equity Savings Fund, or you know, you have this uh, uh, you have this Parag Parikh Long Term Equity Fund. They have their allocation to international stocks, sometimes up to 30, 30, 35 percent. That is good. Uh, that is getting you a exposure in a very neat package. Then you have, you know, these international funds, the NASDAQ 100 or the other fund which I was recommending earlier. That could be, you know, if you are doing a SIP of 15,000 rupees, 5% 5 5,000 rupee SIP can get into that. Uh, you have too many options, uh, but be selective about this, you know. It, it is, one is to diversify and other is to actually have a potentially high performance investment as well. So, I would, you know, it could be a third, it could be half, or it could be all if you're a big believer in tech and other things for which Indian companies. And many a times I find that some of those large global businesses, which are growing much rapidly, are also much cheaper. Uh, they are not as expensive, many a times they are not as expensive as Indian businesses, because in India, the kind of growth expectation that investors have, have uh, has actually you know valued our businesses far more richly sometimes uh, which looks quite unjustifiable or you know many of their foreign peers growing even better uh, uh, they look much cheaper uh, Nitranand Swain is asking that I'm a subscriber of all your services thank you very much uh, that keeps us going uh, please advise whether Motilal Oswal Multicap 35 is a good for continuing an SIP for a five-year period. I hope so. This is going to be, this is, a, this is a very intense growth stock and it is well diversified. It, it has, you know, and you see it every other day that uh, there are days when it, is, it turns out to be the best performing fund and there are days when it turns out to be a, a lackluster fund or, you know, it also falls freely. Recent performance has not been good, but uh, going by the character of the portfolio, I think that whenever we get into a bull phase, whenever we get into the rising phase of the market, this fund will actually uh, raise head. This fund will do well. Uh, it's high quality businesses, uh, concentrated portfolio, uh, reasonably diversified and uh, uh, very intensely growth oriented. So the disadvantage of the growth orientation is that this will be very high, very volatile. And that could be quite unnerving. And it has not done very well in the last one, two years. I would say that if you have the patience, uh, this fund can prove to be very rewarding. But we will be revisiting our views ev every now and then, and we will be keeping you posted uh, through our views on this fund in our analyst uh, uh, opinion. Padmaja Bhatt is asking that uh, we are a couple 70 and 77 year old. 
No retirement fund is available. We have sold our property, planning to shift in rented flat. Where should we invest 50 lakh for retirement planning? Uh, it's very important money and you have to depend on the income from this money. Uh, you will also have higher income requirement because you also need rent now. So I would say that your first stop should be 25 lakh rupees or maybe, you know, uh, senior citizen saving scheme, post office MIP, first stop. And uh, invest equally up to 40 lakh rupees here because your need for definite income guaranteed without much of a, uh, without any uncertainty is very high. But at the same time, I would say that, you know, put your 10 lakh rupees in uh, equity saving fund and that invest money, don't invest at one go. Maybe spread it over the next 12 months to eight, 12 to 18 months. Uh, so by having your 40 lakh rupees in something which is generating guaranteed income for you, hopefully that return, that money, uh, I don't know if it will be enough. Otherwise, you will have to look for some other avenue. I'm just giving you a very sketchy background because go, going by the, the your, uh, your, you know, because you need a very conservative plan. Is that 40 lakh rupees, will it be enough, to, the income that it will generate, will it be enough for you to support, uh, fulfill your income requirement? Then only you can invest that 10 lakh rupees. Otherwise go with entire fixed income with little bit of uh, upside. Uh, Sahil Dhage is asking that due to the recent sale of technology stock, we have seen a healthy correction in US stock market. Should I allow my 10 to 15% portion into the US? Uh, should I allow my 10 to 15% into the US equity opportunity fund? Uh, don't try to time it, you know, it's very difficult. If you're onto any methodical investment plan that this much money is going into this, this much money is going into this, uh, only those plans work very well because the problem is that if the, you know, it's very difficult to predict. And maybe by the time you decide to invest, the market has gone up already. Uh, also, if you are particularly looking at the technology sell-off, why not look at NASDAQ 100, which is more dominated by, you know, it is, it is dominated by the technology stock. And uh, US equity opportunity fund is a, is a good fund, but it is far more diverse. It's not a tech heavy fund. Uh, Vyashak uh, R is asking that I'm a recent subscriber of Value Research Online. I saw some all weather stocks much attractive than Best Buy stocks. So I can purchase those instead of Best Buy's stocks as a new investor. Also, what may be the risk of the service associated with stock advisor compared to the risk associated with fund manager in mutual fund? Uh, first and foremost, you know, best buy is in our view. Uh, also, our best buy recommendation also has a, quite a few all-weather stocks. So best buys and all-weather are not ex mutually exclusive. Best buy is our, in our analyst view, are the stocks which looks most attractive to buy now if you have to start with a smaller universe. It is just provided as a convenience from a, a select list of 10 to 15 stocks for you to invest now if you are subscribing to the service uh, today. And uh, it is a combination of all weather as well as, you know, uh, some other stocks. So that's one. Uh, what is the risk associated? The risk associated is that, you know, all the risk which is, which is linked to equity market our recommendations can go wrong. We can go wrong with many of our stocks. Some of the companies that we recommend despite our due diligence, despite our hard work, some of the companies will not work out. Uh, that is why to de-risk yourself from this, you have to do two things. Read and exercise selectivity. And the other is simple, diversify. Don't, you know, some of our recommendations will do exceedingly well, will be, will be doing will we'll be doing wonderful uh, one yeah, you know will prove to be very rewarding at the same time we will have some of our recommendation which will which will falter which will disappoint which will not go up which will lose lose in value and uh, to de-risk yourself from that you will have to diversify and we don't know which one of it will will do so so diversify exercise your selectivity and we give you enough tool there if you want to be a little more conservative dominate your portfolio with all weather stocks. Uh, if you want to be a little venturesome, go with the smaller stocks and other things, you know, uh, 
you know, have smaller allocation or no allocation to all weather stocks, get into those stocks. If you want to get into the thematic stocks, you know, get into the three, four agriculture stocks, which has, you know, uh, turned out to be agriculture, pharma and technology. You can just build a portfolio, a wonderful portfolio out of those. So it's a, it's a curation service. It's a service which is recommending validated good companies in our view and uh, building a portfolio and then it requires courage it requires patience and it requires intelligence to when to get out or a plan for yourself so do these two three things and uh, i think you know this service it is still too early we are yet to complete our th third birthday for this service and uh, i i would not like to claim great numbers even though we have some great numbers to claim but you know that's not the point I don't think the jury is still out because ever since we started this service, the market has barely gone up. Uh, even if we have succeeded with some of our recommendations, we have also failed with some of our stocks. Many of the, our stocks have been reasonably average. And uh, till about five years, till we complete five years time, you know, time frame, we will not be able to, you know, the judge will, we will, we will not have an opinion in terms of have we really succeeded. If I look at it on a point to point basis that how has our service done if you would have invested 10,000 rupees in each and every recommendation every time we made a new recommendation. And if we compare that performance with every 10,000 rupee invested in a BSE Sensex index fund, we are beating the index by a modest margin. But I don't think that is a great consolation. The great consolation will be when we will be beat, beating the index by a wide margin. And then some of our, some of our, and the risk that you have taken and the, and the, you know, the reward for your patience, the reward for your courage will be when you turn wealthy, when some of the hard stocks actually turn out to be multi-baggers 10, 10 times, 15 times in five years time. And some of them will do, some of them will not. And uh, uh, some of them which will not, will not matter because, you know, the winners will actually drive your performance so substantially. And uh, that is bound to happen. So I would not like to take a claim for this service. I would only like to stake a claim that we will be acting with great sincerity in your interest uh, so that in five years time, we can come and face you with our head held high that you must subscribe. If you are not, right now I don't have that courage to make that claim. But in two years time, I would like to come and actually challenge you that if you are not subscribing to the service, you are missing out on a great opportunity. Uh, but I have to, I hope that, you know, I'll make that claim someday. Uh, Niladri Shekhar Das is asking that, uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of an IPO? Look at it from a, uh, from a very academic point of view that when you buy an IPO or when you buy the stock of an existing company, there is absolutely no difference. Uh, the disadvantage of an IPO is that here is a guy or here, is, here are a set of people who are trying to sell the stock of a company to large number of people who don't know much about it. There is not much known about a relatively new company. And uh, the people who are selling it are the insiders. They are going to be a key beneficiary. So their objective will be to sell it at as high a price as possible. Uh, there is another disadvantage of IPO. Companies, you know, whenever you buy a, a share from an, from a, of a company, in an IPO or from the market, you are going to become an owner. But the whole process of selling the share of an, in an IPO, that which is initial public offer, is that uh, there is, it eventually turns out into a lottery. If it is a good company and if it is priced at some price and there's a huge demand which gets created because of the information, because of the story being weaved, because of the PR machinery or whatever, or maybe it's a good company. And you know, the whole information being spread that here is a great company which is going public. You will actually miss out on something substantial if you don't buy this company. But simply because initially there is a huge high demand. There are many people wanting to buy a stock and there is a defined supply, there's a limited supply. So the scarcity gets created. And that is why you see that, you know, this mind, uh, happy mind stock IPO got oversubscribed by 150 times. Uh, I have written about, a, I have written a column on this, read on value research online, uh, what actually drove that. It's a good company. It has made 73 crore rupees uh, profit 
on a uh, it's it has a return on equity of nearly 26 percent uh, but it, and it is founded by a very you know this company was set up by a very credible promoter who has worked his life at Wipro, he was the vice chairman, then he was the founder of Mindtree, which was a very successful company. It became a billion dollar revenue company and eventually it was sold off to l &T. And now this, at 78 years of age, which I think is a great risk for a business, uh, for, for, for a founding leader. Uh, uh, but at 78 years of age, he has taken this company public, which was set up two, three years ago. And uh, so, this lottery element actually makes it a very funny business. When you are buying a stock, you are actually becoming an owner. And this element of lottery creates an impression that if you get the allotment, sell it and run, you make quick profit. So IPO is perceived as a mechanism of making quick profit if you get lucky with the allotment. So these are the pros and cons. So I think you, know, you should invest in IPO as and when you get such an opportunity, but not for the lottery element, just because you, you will get some allotment in some good company. And uh, I don't think the rules of investing in IPO change simply because it is being sold for the first time. You should be investing in IPO exactly for the same reason that you want to hold the company for a long period of time. Even if it, after it gets listed at some price, you will keep buying it simply because it's a good company. It remains a good company. Uh, but the IPO dynamics are very different and the noise and the uh, the fancy for IPO is entirely because if you get lucky, luck plays a far greater role. If you get lucky, you make quick money, quick bucks there. Sri Ram Ramanathan is asking that asset allocation, while it is easy to get the current value of stocks, mutual fund, it is not straightforward for investments in LIC, PPF, etc. PPF puts interest once a year and we don't know LIC's current value for long. So how do we actually adjust asset allocation in this case, sir? Uh, no, PPF, you set up your account at Value Search Online. And PPF interest, though it might be credited, getting credited every year, but it gets posted in your account every quarter. So you can see your allocation and set up your PPF account at Value Search Online. We do the, and, and these are on fixed quarter ends. So uh, um, March, June, September, and December, we do the postings based on and exactly following the same methodology based on the PPF in prevailing interest rate. And now PPF interest rates also keep changing. So we maintain a record of, you know, the historic uh, interest rate uh, provided for different period in your PPF account. So that, get, that can be taken care of. And if you are a visitor at Value Research, and uh, if you are looking at LIC policies as your investment, my suggestion will be that go and surrender your policies. This is a place where you should not be looking at your investments, you know, LIC policy as investments. And once you have turned your policy, surrendered your ULIP policy or endowment policy uh, and bought your term insurance, then put your investments in the portfolio tracker. That is how 100% of your investments will be tracked at value research. And there is no shortcut to it. And I will be greatly offended if you are visiting value research online, reading and learning things here, and uh, you are still thinking of making your investments in ULIP and uh, endowment policies. Rahul Sharma is asking that, uh, when do you expect next market correction and how deep? Uh, Rahul, I don't know. And uh, I don't know how, because I don't know, so I also don't know how deep it will be. But I can paint both the pictures. I can paint both the pictures for and against that why there will be no correction and the why the market will keep going up. And I can also paint the picture that why there will be a, where there will be a great market correction and it will be very deep. Uh, and there are reasons why both can happen. And uh, that is why I would say that uh, because both can happen, work on your asset allocation rules and follow that. If you get lucky with either of it, you will benefit. Uh, and uh, if you work on one of the pictures and you fail, uh, if you go wrong, it will be a huge missed opportunity. Assuming that the market goes up and keeps going up, and while you are well prepared for a, a big market correction and a very deep one, uh, it will be a missed opportunity. If you actually prepare for uh, that the market will not go up, 
and market actually goes down dramatically then also you will be uh, you will be a big loser so only asset allocation can get give you some consolation and also it you know uh, one has to really frame these rules with great humility in mind that we don't know and we do, and and it is not possible to know arun singh is asking that uh, what are the factors we need to check before investing um, i think learn a little bit nobody can actually be, be more responsible or you know more uh, involved or best uh, will be working in best interest as yourself and i think there are certain rules to follow when it comes to investing one is that have your emergency fund if you have dependents get your insurance first first term insurance and health, health insurance then save as much as you can and then invest your long term money into equity and short term requirement you know the money which you are likely to need in 1 2 3 4 years that should be in fixed income now where to invest in equity till you are able to figure out start with a balanced fund and uh, keep learning come and read our article there is a particular thing you know goal and buckets uh, go to value search online look for this story goal and buckets and uh, for your different goals you can create different buckets it might sound very sophisticated it is not you broadly have these four buckets which you have to you know map your savings to and that should be your first article work on your emergency fund get your insurance and get going if you are unable to figure out start your sip in a balanced fund and uh, take your time to learn no hurry uh, you are capturing a good part of the market gains anyway uh, and when you feel confident increase your money i think more important thing is save as much as you can saving is not investment so till you actually put put make that investment it will not be at work and in your initial first 5 6 months don't look at the investment values every day because that could be very scary that could be unnerving that that will scare you that you will be tempted to take your money out and after that i think you will be able to figure out things yourself so thank you very much for these interesting question i enjoyed answering them today as much as uh, you know hopefully you liked getting the answers from me and uh, see you once again next